Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is about the analyzers component built into our case management tool. Analyzers are a function that we added in version 2.3.130 to allow users to gain added context around the observables that they discover during an investigation. For example, a domain name could be checked against who is to retrieve registration information. By building this functionality directly into the cases interface, we hope to streamline intelligence gathering during an investigation and minimize tool switching for your analysts. In this demonstration, we're going to pivot from a Suricata alert for an executable download to open a case, put in some data from our logs as observables, and then use analyzers to retrieve more information about them. We'll also talk a bit about how to configure tools that require an API key so that you can take advantage of them in analyzers. Before we begin, I'd like to take a minute to note that if you haven't watched our video on the cases tool yet, you might want to start there to make sure you understand the interface we're working with. We'll put a link to that video in the description for this one. Okay, let's get started. We begin by logging into our Security Onion console, or SOC, with the username and password that we established during installation. Once we've logged in, we can click on the Alerts link on the left-hand side of the window. This will bring up the Alerts console, which shows us any outstanding alerts in our environment. As you can see in this demo environment over the last 24 hours, we've had one alert. This is a high severity alert that was raised by Suricata and it indicates that a client on my network downloaded a Windows executable over plain text HTTP. At this point, we have no idea if this is benign or malicious. It may just be a sanctioned software update of some kind that's being served over HTTP or it may be a piece of malicious software. We don't know, so this merits further investigation. To start the investigation, we'll click on the rule name, actions, and hunt. This will give us a window in which to investigate the alert. We're gonna middle click on this to open it in a new tab. And to track our investigation, we're going to click the escalate button here, escalate to a new case, and this will open a new case in the case management tool. Click on Cases, we'll see we have a brand new case, and the case title by default is the name of the alert we just escalated. Click on the binoculars to open it up, and you'll see we have a full case record here to record our investigation. So as you can see, there's a few tabs across the top of the window here. There's a comment section. This is so that analysts can record their notes on the investigation. Attachments, so if there's an additional file or piece of evidence that needs to be uploaded and attached, you can do that here. Observables, which is a list of discrete indicators of activity or indicators of compromise that we want to record from the case. Events, which is other event logs from within Security Onion that we have attached to this case. And then history. This is an audit history for the case itself. So if you have multiple analysts working on an investigation, you can keep track of who has made what change to the case file. So now we have our case established. We can start our investigation. We'll go back to Hunt. We're going to click the refresh uh, button here. And we'll see that starting out, we have a Suricata alert. Again, this is for a Windows executable downloaded via HTTP. Our first step is to see what other logs we have in Security Onion that correspond to this network flow. So we're going to click on any of these fields, actions, and correlate. Now, what Correlate does is it goes into Security Onion and finds any other logs with the same community ID as the alert. The community ID is a data structure that's made up of the source and destination IPs and ports, and whether this is a TCP or UDP network flow. So basically, it's sort of a fingerprint from the alert that also matches network logs and other logs in Security Onion that may be related to it. In this case, we checked for community IDs, and in addition to our original Suricata alert, we now have a Zeek connection log. Uh, Zeek connection logs are similar to NetFlow. It's source and destination, how much data was transferred, some sort of basic layer three information like that. And we also have a Zeek HTTP log. As you recall, the alert was for an executable being transferred over HTTP. So this HTTP log will contain things like the user agent uh, that was used to download it, the HTTP status code, the URI, the virtual host, etc. 
So this is all good metadata around the HTTP session that was used to download the executable. One thing you'll notice, there's no Zeek file entry, even though our alert was for a file being downloaded. The reason for that is that Zeek file logs do not have port information in them. And without port information, they're unable to generate that community ID. They do, however, contain a Zeek connection log item that we can correlate on. So if we go to our connection log, which is this last one here, we click and we go to correlate again, you'll see that we are now correlating with both the community ID and the connection log up here in our query. And so now we have our Zeek connection log, our Zeek file log, our Zeek HTTP log, and our original Suricata alert. So we have three separate logs all related to this network flow, as well as the alert that says, hey, at some point an executable was downloaded via this network flow. We should probably investigate that. So we'll take this additional evidence. We'd see the alert has already been escalated. That's why it's grayed out. We'll click on these and go to attach to a recently viewed case. Now, if we return to our case, we'll refresh the window and we'll see all of our Zeek events that we have just escalated. Our connection, HTTP and file logs are all now contained within this case so we can leverage them for our investigation. So what's our next step? Well, we probably want to pull some of those observables out of these logs and add them to our case. We'll start with file. We'll open that up. We'll see here is all our metadata about that executable file that was downloaded. If we scroll down uh, to hash.md5, we can click on the eyeball icon here to add it as an observable. And we'll see uh, it fills in some of this data for us. What type of observable is it? It's a hash. What is the hash value? Here it is, it's copied over from the event. Uh, the description is hash.md5, that's sufficient for now. Uh, these are all editable if you want to change them, but we're gonna stick with the defaults. Uh, there's a traffic light protocol, so if this observable is something that you need to keep tightly constrained, you can set it to TLP red if you need to, depending on whether you're using those sort of sharing rules in your environment. Once everything is set the way we want, we click add and you'll see it is added as an observable. We have a file hash is an observable in this case, along with some data about it. We'll go back to events. Uh, we probably also would like the IP that this hash came from. So we'll add that as an observable. And you'll see it's recorded it as a different type. So we have an IP observable with the IP of the web server and we have a hash observable with the hash of the file itself. So if we want some more context, some more information around these observables, that's where the analyzers come in. Uh, to kick off an analyzer run, we can just click on the lightning bolt icon here. Uh, for example, for this file hash observable, if we click on that, you'll see it changes to a clock icon for a moment. Then it will change back to a lightning bolt icon once the analysis run is complete. We open this up and you'll see we now have analyzer results. Uh, analyzers process one, so we took this hash and we referred it to one external service for further information. If we click on the box, we'll see that that service was the malware hash registry. So we gave this file hash to them. We asked if it matched any malicious uh, executables in their hash registry, and they said no. This is not known to be a piece of malicious software. If we want to refer a different observable to an analyzer, we can do that here. See, we have this IP address observable. We'll click on that. Once again, it changes to a clock momentarily and then changes back to a lightning bolt. When we open that up, we'll see analyzers processed one. In this case, it was an IP address. So rather than referring it to a malware hash registry, which would not have IP information, by default, we send those to spam house and spam house comes back and says, no, this IP address, as far as we know, is not malicious. Right there, we can get the full JSON from the response. Status is okay. Now, Security Onion ships with some analyzers installed by default. The ones that allow anonymous usage, that is that you don't have to register for, have an API key for, will work automatically out of the box. So if you're using cases and you have these observables in there, click on the lightning bolt, 
to see what sort of additional context or information you get. Uh, the analyzers that are included by default are constantly changing. I would recommend checking out our documentation page. There'll be a link at the end of this video uh, to get a current outline of what sort of analyzer services are included by default and what sort of data, what sort of observables they're useful for. With that said, there are also analyzers that ship with Security Onion that can be enabled if you have an API key. So we'll close this and we'll go to our manager's command line here. If we sudo to root and then we edit our minion pillar file, so we'll see here in the sensoroni configuration under salt, uh, we have a analyzers directive and we can add configuration information for our analyzers here. So for example, if I want to add my virus total API, I can just paste that in here and then save my file, restart Sensoroni, and then once Sensoroni is restarted, if I go back here and run my analyzers again, say for this file hash, once the analyzer runs, I can open this up and you'll see now instead of analyzers processed one, which was malware hash registry, now I've got analyzers processed two. If I open this up, you'll see I have an entry for malware hash registry again because that's still in my configuration. I also have one for virus total. Virus total you can see is a lot more verbose. I've got almost 24 kilobytes of output here and I can look and see all of the results from virus total. So I have very similar results here to what I would if I had just pasted that hash into the virus total web console, but this way it's all integrated into my case management, into my investigation. All of this will be retained in the case, and so I have a record going forward. It's both easier for record keeping and more efficient for my analysts. Same thing here for the IP, if I want to click on the lightning bolt here. Now when I open this up, I'll have analyzers process 2. Here's all of the IP information from virus total, things like the owner and so on. So that's what analyzers are all about. The intent is to provide a way for analysts to pull additional context or information from external sources about observables that they encounter during an investigation. This will streamline the investigative process because they won't be switching between tools or switching between windows. And as a side benefit, it will also ensure that all of this information is stored within the case management platform. If you have questions about cases or analyzers or any other component at Security Onion, our documentation page is available at securityonion.net slash docs. That's the best place to check for current information about what analyzers we're including and how to put in things like API keys for ones that you'd like to utilize. If you're interested in our paid training offerings, information on that is available at securityonion.net slash training. In our training, we get much deeper into topics like this and things like how to build your own analyzers. And if you are trying to use analyzers and running into trouble, please start a new thread on our Security Onion discussion board at securityonion.net slash discuss. Thanks so much. Have a great day.